Let's take a look at some quadrants, planes, and body cavities in this video here. Now, what we'll start off with are subdivisions of the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, first of all, think about what we're looking at, abdominal pelvic cavity. Talk about everything inferior to your heart and lungs, all the way down here to your lower limbs, not including those. So think about all this abdominal region and then this pelvic region, which is lower beneath it. Now, what you want to do is take this abdominal pelvic cavity and make two intersecting lines, right? Now, again, if you look up here, heart and lungs are not included in this. We're looking down inferior, below the heart and lungs. So imagine you make a line going vertical in this direction and another one horizontal right here and have those lines intersect at the umbilical or navel region right there. So you make a plus sign. That's going to separate out all this area we call the abdominal pelvic cavity into four quadrants. Now there'll be an upper right and an upper left, lower right and lower left. Don't forget when you're looking at an individual, always use what would be their right and their left. And of course, we got an upper and lower for each one. Now, what you want to know with these body cavities and these uh, abdominal pelvic cavities is what organs are found where. So again, what we've done is taken this region, right, from here to here, all this in here, separated out into four different quadrants. So we got our two upper and our two lower. And you want to know what structures are there. You want to know what organs are deep to these quadrants. This is some superficial anatomy. In other words, knowing from the surface of the body what structures are found deeper in that area. It could be very handy to know, especially in something like healthcare. So if you look at the right upper quadrant, what occupies a lot of it is your liver. Most of your liver is in that right upper quadrant a bit of your large intestine, and a bit of the small. You'll see those intestines are found in all four of the quadrants. Your right kidneys way up high and to the back, posterior. You got your gallbladder under your liver, so that's where it'll be found, is in this quadrant too. The superior top part of the right ureter, and that's a hollow muscular tube that takes urine from the kidneys down to urinary bladder. You'll see that in a future chapter. And then a small part of the stomach. Most of that stomach's in the left upper, but a little of it's in this right upper. Look at that left upper quadrant, just a little bit of the liver, most all your stomach, again, some of each of the intestines, you'll see those in all four, pancreas is in that left upper, your left kidney, spleen, and part of your left ureter. Now look down at the two lower quadrants, down in that right lower, large and small intestine, once again, and something you'll only see down in that quadrant there is the appendix. Somebody ever has severe pain way down low in that lower right quadrant, good chance it's going to be that appendix. And there's a lower part of the right ureter and the right half of the urinary bladder. Look at the left lower quadrant, you see the same stuff except no appendix. That thing's only in that right lower. So again, we take this region all in here, make us two intersecting lines. Here's your right upper. Now look what you can see. Some of these organs you can actually see in this picture here. A lot of your liver, some of the large and small intestine, right kidney you can't see, but it'd over, be over in here in the superior part of that ureter, and then your gallbladder be right around in here. Look over here at your left upper, a little bit of the liver, most all your stomach, and back behind it you'd have the pancreas and left kidney, part of this ureter over here on the left side, and of course both the intestines once again. Get down to these two lower quadrants, most of the same stuff. Large and small intestine, inferior part of each of the ureters, and of course each half of the urinary bladder. But again, down in the lower right quadrant is that appendix. That's something different about that one down in there. So you can look at those pictures in those quadrants. You need to know what structures are found in each one of those four quadrants. Let's also look at body planes. Now, there are several different body planes you can look at. These are used often throughout your book to dissect organs. So when they often take something like a heart, stomach, whatever, and they cut it in half, you want to know how it was cut. You want to know if they cut this thing in half, what two halves are you looking at? Are you looking at the front and back, the left and right, or the top and bottom? And that's what these planes will tell you. So you'll often see an organ dissected, and then one of these planes will be listed below it to let you know how it was cut. So start with this frontal, sometimes called the coronal plane. Divides the body or a structure, whatever it may be, look at this, into anterior and posterior halves. Remember, that's front and back. 
So somebody cut a heart in half this way and opened it up, you know you're looking in the front half in one picture and the back half in the other. Transverse or cross plane divides a structure into superior and inferior halves. So say you cut a heart in half this way, pulled it apart, you'd be looking inside the top half and inside the bottom half. Median plane will divide a structure into right and left halves. So look what we had, front and back, top and bottom, and right and left. Those are the three body planes you see most, used most all the time throughout your pictures. But you might have a few of these others scattered here and there, like the oblique is a division at something other than a right angle. Sometimes they don't try and cut these evenly in halves and whatever in right angles. Anything, say, from 1 to 44 degrees would be an oblique. Longitudinal. Here's where we take something long. Like, say you had a long piece of intestine laid out on the desk in front of you. And you started at one end of that thing and went all the way through it from the left side to the right. That would be a longitudinal cut. Cross or transverse is cut at a right angle. And that's usually how you see them being cut there. So don't forget those body planes. You'll see those more. Now we have body cavities inside of us in the trunk of the body. There are several different cavities you want to be familiar with. You want to know what structures, what organs are found in each one. So up at the top, we'll start with a thoracic cavity. Now this is generally what you think of as your chest. Look at what it's bordered by, your sternum, right there in the center of your chest, that uh, breastbone. You got your ribs, your vertebrae, intercostal muscles or muscles in between the ribs used for breathing, ventilation. And then your diaphragm muscle is a thin muscle that goes all the way through you from front and back. It is a border. It's at the bottom, very bottom of your thoracic cavity, but it's at the very top of the abdominal cavity. So it goes all the way through you front and back and separates those two cavities. Now this thoracic cavity, largely what's found inside of it, is heart and lungs. Some other things in there, but heart and lungs are the really big ones. Now inside of the thoracic, there are three other smaller cavities. There's one pericardial and two pleural. So the pericardial cavity, a smaller cavity inside the thoracic, surrounds your heart and nothing else. There are two pleural cavities. Each one surrounds a lung. The abdominal surrounds all this stuff inferior to that diaphragm muscle, all the way down to that pelvic cavity. So a lot of that stuff we saw in those previous pictures, intestine, stomach, liver, whatever that may be. But again, you get down inside your hips, put your hands on your hips left and right. Everything inside your hands right there, inside those big old bones is your pelvic cavity. So again, that's below, inferior of the abdominal cavity, inside your hips, and of course these things like urinary bladder, parts of the intestines, and so on. But you also can take the abdominal and pelvic cavity and put them together. If you just stick everything in them together, you can call that the abdominal pelvic cavity. Nothing wrong with that. So don't forget that diaphragm muscle. That's a big muscle when it comes to moving air in and out of your lungs. But don't forget, it is the floor, the bottom of that thoracic cavity, and it's the ceiling, the top of that abdominal cavity. And something else you'll often hear mentioned along with these cavities is a region called the mediastinum. It's not an enclosed body cavity like those others, but it is an area in between your lungs. So mediastinum is something else you'll often hear along with that. And there are some pictures where you could imagine these. Again, thoracic cavity would be all this region in here. There'd be a pleural around each one of your lungs, so there's two of those. And we can't see your heart, but there'd be a pericardial around it. And then of course you got your abdominal cavity down in here, pelvic cavity down here lower, and abdominal pelvic be both of them together. And again, there is a region called the mediastinum in between your lungs, heart's one thing that's found in it along with some others, just something else you may see along with it. Now what else goes with those body cavities? is that each body cavity always has these two membranes associated with it. Now these two serous membranes will always be visceral and parietal. Now if we look at these two membranes, the visceral will always be the inner, the parietal will always be another one around it. Now something else to remember with this inner visceral layer, that's always going to be the surface of an organ. So let's say we're looking at just the pericardial cavity. Well, if you're looking at a heart, the outer top surface of that heart is what's called the visceral layer of those two serous membranes. So there's your inner layer, the surface of an organ, 
will always be the inner visceral layer. Now, there'll be another layer around it. That's what's called the parietal. If you ever look at a dissection of a body going into the heart, you'll see there's what looks like almost a thin bag around your heart. That's that outer parietal layer. So think once again, inner visceral, outer parietal. Surface of your heart is the inner layer, and that layer around it is going to be the outer parietal. Now, we always mention these two membranes, and at the same time, mention there's a fluid in between them. Now, in general, you can just call it serous fluid, but you could also call those fluids more particular names, depending on which cavity you're in. If you wanted to call the serous fluid uh, in those membranes around the heart, the pericardial fluid, that's okay. The fluid in between the two membranes around your lungs, the pleural, and so on, that's just fine right there. But the reason we always point out there's fluid in between those two membranes is because that fluid in those membranes serve two important functions. They reduce friction and help to hold those organs into place. And if you look at how that fluid and membrane does that, think of those two membranes as being like two pieces of glass. Think about if two pieces of glass are dry. They'll come apart easily. But if you put a little water in between them, they won't. It holds it in place. That's one thing that fluid does. Also, if you had two pieces of glass and they were dry, if you pushed one over the other, they'd probably scratch and you'd get damage to that glass. Think about these membranes with fluid in between them. That fluid will cause a redu reduction in friction. So it'll flow real easy, makes a real slippery surface in between those two membranes. And if you think about it as your heart is constantly filling with blood and partially emptying and your lungs doing the same thing with air, those two membranes, you figure the surface of your lung and whatever's around it is always rubbing against each other. But with that fluid, it'll reduce that friction. So you take like two pieces of glass, put some water in between them, they'll roll a whole lot easier where when they were dry, they would not. So again, there's our cavities. Pericardial is around the heart. There are two plural, each around the lung. Abdominal pelvic, or again, you could separate that into abdominal and pelvic if you like. And you'll also see this layer called the peritoneum lining the abdominopelvic cavity. Now, this layer surrounds most all the organs. If you ever see somebody clean an animal when they gut it open, when they open that abdominopelvic cavity, you'll see what looks like a bag holding most of those guts. That's that peritoneum. Well, you'll notice that not everything, not all those organs are inside that layer. Some of them are outside of it. And that's what they call retroperitoneal organs. They'll be behind it. A lot of them are primarily posterior to that membrane. So you can see there are several organs which are not surrounded by that peritoneum layer, that little bag. Kidneys, adrenal glands, pancreas, urinary bladder, and a little bit of the intestines are examples of those. So don't forget those layers and those serous membranes that go with those body cavities.